let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast, Coach Colin here. I like to do this every time Joe brings up this topic. I like to do a little update for people. Joe and Jimmy get into the topic of Maui and what's going on in Maui. They talk about what they know, just surface level from what they hear, you know, and you don't hear a whole lot. So I figured I would give you guys a little update and I know it may not be something that's affecting you directly, but it is something that everybody should stay on top of because if people actually try to take the land away from those people, that is something that every single American needs to know about because it might be Hawaii and it might be five hours in a plane to get there, but still, and I mean five hours from land to land, you know what I mean? It might be far away, but it's still America. And if they're taking people's land like that, they can do it anywhere. So I like to just update people. So I'm going to be showing you the Joe Rogan clip, of course. Then I'm going to be showing you some questions that have been raised because they've been looking into this for a long time. And they're starting to point at the mayor of Maui and suggest that he was negligent. So I'm going to be showing you that. Then I'm going to be showing you that they're actually starting to rebuild in Maui. Construction is going on, but it's a little more complicated than the news is letting on. So we'll get into that in a second. Let's go. Joe Rogan first, of course. In sports and swimming and all that, then we're not our eyes off the ball. Right. Our eyes off the 200 or $600 billion they're sending to the military industrial complex and enough for transfer of wealth. We're not talking about the CARES Act, the largest. We're not talking about things that actually matter to them. People are still living under bridges. People don't have health care that doesn't bankrupt them. People can't go bankrupt just trying to go to college. People don't have a decent 80% of workers live in paycheck to paycheck half the country can't afford a 500 emergency all that shit we're not talking about any of that stuff if we're talking about all that other stuff exactly exactly and that's part of the playbook the playbook is keep the people distracted and divided that's always been the playbook and then while we're in the middle of these international conflicts that are baffling to everybody involved and you're wondering how they have all this money to do that but they don't have any money to address all the problems that we have <laughs> How about the people in Maui? Imagine being a person in Maui you that lost your that? home. They give you seven hundred dollars, and then you still can't rebuild. It's a year later; nothing's been built. And at the blink of an eye, they give a hundred billion dollars to Zelensky. And, and well, even worse, they accidentally sent Ukraine six billion. <laughs> they sent an accidental six billion. So then we looked up, like, how much would it cost to rebuild every house that got destroyed in the fire? Five billion. So they could have done so that. So why wouldn't they do that? Why, why wouldn't they do that? Why, do why wouldn't they do that? I don't understand. Those people are devastated. And then there's all this talk you know, about like go taking to, over that land. And well, you go to Maui. I was in Maui, and you see people have uh, put graffiti on the side of buildings saying this is a land grab. Yeah. You see that a lot. It is a land grab. It's a pretty transparent land grab. Right? It's happening in front of our eyes, and no one's doing anything about it because it's five hours in a jet across the ocean. And we're watching this shit take place where these people... And first of all, just horrible mismanagement of water rights, horrible mismanagement of power lines. The fact that they have horrible winds, crazy winds there, and they've had these fucking power lines that are above ground. When I lived in California, my fucking lines were underground. They figured it out there. How come they didn't figure it out in Hawaii? You know how much money could have been saved? They just put the power lines underground? It was so unfortunate that they're... Our alarm system malfunctioned. Yeah, how about so, that? And that the water got turned off, so the firefighters... They wouldn't let them turn the water on. It like was people, the, the water's a very valuable commodity there. The whole so, thing is f***ing so, insane. And that the cops are turning people back into the fire. It's just, it's just, these the are whole all, thing is insane. These are, these are all just unfortunate, it was just unfortunate things. Well, how about that mayor who goes on TV, like what, two weeks after the fires, talks about how they're going to like try to figure out how to turn it into a monument? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't see you ever that. that speech? No. Was it the mayor or the governor? I forget which which guy it was. But he was talking about how they're talking about erecting a monument and like turning it into a park or something. Like what? it's the whole. It's super valuable land where these people are. Yeah, that's the problem yes. that everybody recognizes. These people have these modest homes on this super valuable piece of land, and if something should happen. Some looms, some Oops. Whoopsies. Whoopsies. If that whoopsies happens, and then they can figure out a way to take it. Ha, ha, I, you know, have you ever seen a fire that melted <laughs> the, the wheels off of cars? And It does. I mean, fires do do that. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, extreme heat is f***ing insane what it does to cars. And also, cars 
are filled with oil, oil and gasoline. The, the, the kind of heat that you get off of a burning vehicle is extraordinary. You know, when you're like, it, fires are one thing, like a wood fire, but a fire of a car that's filled with 30 gallons of gas and has rubber tires, like that heat is f extraordinary. Yeah, extraordinary. I, I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, fire can do wild things, man. It, it really can, but the, the real problem is how they handled everything. It's so poorly done. By the way, they've had wildfires there commonly because of the fact that they have, like, see, there it's. Yeah. Tennessee. Yeah, liquid aluminum, so yeah. the, the, the wheels melt. So that's all liquid aluminum. Oh, that's really? the wheels melting. Yeah. All right, fire, so now I believe you. Yeah, fire from gasoline and uh, everything in a car is made out of plastic. Think about if you have vinyl seats and plastic grommets and all these different plastic pieces that are on your sides, you know, your, your A columns and all this. Uh, all that's plastic. The fucking steering wheel's plastic. Yeah. The dashboard's plastic. Yeah. All that shit goes up, and bro, you better get the out of the way and 30 gallons of gasoline like that that's that's heat man that okay. melts everything melts okay. melts mufflers melts everything uh, anything aluminum is f***ed. i love that jimmy was just like i don't believe you <laughs> that was beautiful then of course jamie comes in to show him, hey, no, actually, you should believe this i'm the fact checker and i'm fact checking and i'm showing you that that's what happens Show me this in, in anywhere else. Oh, uh, well, we have a picture here. What fire was that? Uh, we're not sure. It just We're just showing you that it's true. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of with Jimmy on that, I got to say. I don't know. I've, I've examined every theory that has come about as those fires were happening, and I'm unsure, man, because it's just it's really expensive land. There's been so many people who have wanted that land, land around it. They've acquired it. You guys already know from Oprah to The Rock, all sorts. And it's not just them. All sorts of famous people have so much land and they would love to have more. I'm sure there's golf courses, resorts, all sorts of people, all sorts of industries that would want that land, including the government as well. So it, it's it's really hard to say, but... If Joe says so, but I will say this, I will say this when it comes to uh, cars on fire, I have been around and helped light some cars on fire in the film, in television industry. So not in my spare time, this is not recreational, but I've been around, helped set up, clear things out for people, um, pyrotechnics, special effects guys, who have to make sure a car lights up, especially on that show. Uh, what show was it? I think it's called Titans. I believe it's called Titans. I've never watched any show that I've been on before. Um, Handmaid's Tale, nothing. I have not watched the shows. I don't do that. <laughs> Women Talking is a movie that came out. No, I never watch any of it. But, but I've been around when cars have to go up and they don't always do that. Whether they have gas in them or not. So what he's saying is it could be true under certain circumstances, but it's not always true. So the fact that he sticks to that talking point is like, nah, you need more experience in that realm. But, uh, you know, that's just me. Anyways, let's get to the facts. They're starting to question the mayor and the, I don't know, uh, state government, local government that was in charge of this whole thing as this devastation was taking place. And they're starting to bring up the word negligence. Let's get into it. Never letting this happen again. A nearly 400 page investigation raising new and troubling questions about Maui County Mayor Richard Bisson. As hurricane force winds raged, igniting fires, several schools closed and the state was preparing an emergency proclamation. At multiple times during the day, Mayor Bisson said declaring an emergency was not necessary. At 3.15 p.m., as the fire grew in intensity, state officials tried to reach him, asking if he was in the emergency operations center. They were told no. He finally signed the emergency order at 8 p.m., hours after Lahaina burned down. Last August, we confronted the mayor, who had admitted not calling Hawaii's defense director, Kenneth Hara, the entire day. You are the highest ranking official here on the island. If the buck stops with your office, how is that possible? Yeah, I can't speak to what 
or whose responsibility it was to communicate the. But you're the boss of this island, I so am. yes, you can speak to it. Yeah, I'm saying I can't say who was responsible for communicating with General Hara. The Maui fire killed more than 100 people and destroyed thousands of homes and businesses. Very little was done to prevent something like this from happening. Do you think that complacency in this case has turned into negligence? It, it crossed the border. It crossed the line. And Jonathan joins us now from Honolulu. Jonathan, this is just phase one of the attorney general's investigation. What, what questions are still out there? Yeah, John, phase one specifically focus on the emergency response before, during, and after this fire. It does not touch on what caused this fire. That's going to be part of phase two of this investigation. There is this working theory that a downed power line could have sparked this blaze, but we're being told at this point it could take several more months before there is a final determination, John. And based on your reporting, is anyone liable for the department's shortcomings during this disaster? You know, the experts that we have spoken with that have unique knowledge with how emergency response works, they say that there was negligence. And case in point, just yesterday, we were on Maui. We listened to the Maui fire chief describe their early response and how they were overwhelmed in the morning before the worst of the fire even hit in Lahaina. And now today we're hearing in this report that there were many times when the state reached out to the fire chief and the mayor offering that backup, and they said no. The attorney general says this report is not about pointing fingers, but as you can imagine now, many people have answers from the mayor about what transpired, why he did not call for backup or issue that emergency response earlier. We reached out to the mayor ourselves for comment, but we have not heard back at this point, John. And Jonathan, did these reports reveal anything about how Maui can better prepare uh, for disaster in the future? They did. About 20 pages, the first 20 pages or so of this report, focus on the habitat in Lahaina and the impact climate change and a growing population have had on it. They recommend conserving water, restoring wetlands, removing dry and invasive grasses. Now, it's important to point out 10 years ago. Some also, I mean, uh, I'd like to add to that if I could, you know, 20 pages, probably saying that it's emergency right away. Probably sounding the alarms. No matter what you think, you should just do it just so people are notified. False alarm, but people are safe is better than a real emergency and the people end up passing away. Just just a thought. Now, that was two months ago and this is eight days ago. So they've been examining what's going on since the whole thing took place two months ago. Now they're starting to question the mayor and everything. And now they're actually starting to build. There is construction happening in Maui. At a five, Maui County officials pointed proudly to construction underway in the impact zone yesterday, just 10 months after the devastating fire leveled much of Lahaina. But as H&N investigates, Daryl Huff explains, some residents say the future is still uncertain despite progress in clearing the land. After what we saw right after the fires, this is transformational. I'm on Coma Mai Street in one of Lahaina's newest subdivisions where most of the lots have been cleared and there's actually shovels on the ground beginning to build foundations. Javier Navarro's masonry crew is digging trenches for plumbing at Kim Ball's lot, just the beginning of the construction rush. Oh, we're gonna have choke jobs right now. Just down the street, amid the landscape of cleared and graveled lots, another neighbor is pouring what's likely the first new foundation in the burn zone, meaning county site inspections are also moving along, far ahead of initial projections that led some residents to give up. I know some of my neighbors thought it was going to be a five-year process and either have moved uh, to a neighbor island or moved to the mainland or else bought different properties throughout Maui. So that, that's kind of sad. But just over the wall from Komomai is Mill Camp, the former plantation village which the county has designated a special management zone. Here in Mill Camp, the roads are so narrow, this is where many people died trapped. The county does not want the people here to rebuild until they have a plan to make the community safer. From here to here, it's 13 and a half feet. And for those that knows that what's the legal size, we are far from legal. Sean Sarabe is an unofficial voice of the Kahua and Mill Camp neighborhood. What do you picture is going to happen to this area? Uh, as a question, I don't think 
any of us can answer in Kahua camp. The small, odd-angled lots and twisting, narrow roads made Kahua a death trap for 42 people. If it's made safer with wider, straighter roads, sidewalks, and underground utilities, you can't fit all the houses. So a land swap is being discussed to expand the footprint to make room for improvements. So most homeowners, even those with cleared lots, like Jessica Kariam, can't even take steps to getting permits. How do I know that the property is going to be the same size or that we're not going to be in a different area. No, you don't know. Everything's up in the air. And then, you know, why would we pay all this money for plans that may not even be here? Meanwhile, even with an insurance payout, finances are getting thin. The money's going to run out soon if we don't figure this out. Mayor Richard Bisson said he's considering financial aid for families waiting for the county's decisions, even as he celebrated those privileged to rebuild. I'm happy for them. I, I'm hopeful that others can get in. We, we know our people are struggling with issues of mortgage, of insurance, of other things that are very real. They've really expedited the cleanups, and, but we just kind of want a timeline. We need to know what direction we're going. With every Man, you would think that there are so many congressmen and women who bring things to the floor at these hearings. You know, whether it's more money for vets, which is very needed, um, you know, faster action on the wall, whatever, you know, Ukraine money, Israel money. You know, there's, there's so many different things. You would think that some of them would be, would get together. It could just be straight up bipartisan and be like, hey, we need X amount of billions towards Maui. We need it, you know, because now they're talking about land swaps. When I hear that, I'm disgusted. You know, when you hear about a land swap, you're like, oh, OK, well, look at that. They're, they're doing a land swap. So now people and then you're also being told, hey, it's, the roads aren't safe. So I know you're waiting to build, but also you may not get the same amount of land, you know, just because we need safety. So the thing about it is, you know, there is a land swap going on. Like, I see what the, I don't know. It just, it seems like they're kind of filtering people towards a certain option. That's what it seems like to me. But again, the headline that you'll hear is that construction is starting and that will calm people down. But it's it's not as simple as that. Here, I'll show you a little more of the construction going on. Somebody took some drone footage. Just the part of Lahaina that is seeing the most construction progress at this time. Right now, we're flying over the Emerald Plaza industrial area just below the Lahaina bypass and the large building project in front of us is an 89 unit community that will consist of one, two, and three bedroom units. This project is affordable housing and it'll be a great start to returning local families back to Lahaina town. It looks like they've made good progress over the past month and are already working on the second floor. Now we're flying over the top of the Cahoma stream and entering into the Cahoma Homes neighborhood. On the left hand side of the screen, you can see three lots that are actively digging and framing for footings. So just so you know, just to silence this guy really quick, the ones that you see that are digging, they're making progress. What you're not seeing is foundation at all these things. That's what I thought when I first saw it. I thought, oh, there's a lot of foundation going on. This is not all foundation. The people who were digging were the ones that were actually digging out lots. Um, and this gentleman goes on to just talk about the one, the one place that's actually setting up walls currently. Uh, basically they've been given out of everybody who needs to build 22 people have been permitted to build another 72 are still waiting. And there's just hundreds that are kind of just in limbo, haven't even reached that process yet at all. So again, you may hear if you look into Maui that, Hey, they're starting to build, but it's really just not that simple. Now, again, I, I go to this guy's channel a lot. I think you should too. I don't know him. I don't get paid. It's not one of those things. The guy's name is Peter Santanello. He has a video inside the restricted burn zone of Lahaina. This is where you kind of get an inside look into how tricky this is. This gentleman is actually somebody who is waiting to rebuild his house, his family's house 
was actually taken in the blaze. So listen to this. They're cleaning these down, you know, six right. inches of topsoil at least. And, you know, they're just out here working 12 hours a day. And then you have unique situations, you know, in Hawaii, we CPR a land, condi minimize a land to split it into different lots. It's, it's different than subdivision. It gets complicated pretty fast. We don't even know when or how we'll be able to rebuild. There's not a lot of developers. There's not a lot of contractors out here. The scope of this thing is so big. Yeah. Nobody has, has the blueprints for it and nobody could just figure it all out at once. But at the same time, it, it, it's eight months later, we have no control over when this gets done. It's up to Army Corps of Engineers, FEMA, the county. And in the meantime, we're expected to pay our mortgage on it. Well, you, you got to pay your mortgage on this right now. Yeah. So you know, in, we have, you have insurance. Yeah, right? we have homeowners insurance. Yeah. And homeowners insurance, they give you a specific amount, you know, like this in a full loss. They're giving, I mean, let's talk real numbers. Nobody ever wants to talk real numbers. This okay. is, we paid $800,000 for this house. Okay. They're giving us $270,000 to rebuild. That's, that's what our plan was. And then there's, if you reach, if you max that out, it can go up to 35% over that. So but in, less than $400,000 to rebuild our home. In, in one of the most expensive areas. Yeah. Maybe we had a plan. Maybe we should have updated, you know, but who, who honestly goes in every year? Oh, uh, inflation is up 8%. I should adjust my homeowner's insurance. You know, like when you think of insurance, that's kind of what you think of. Oh, we're taken care of. You know, we'll, we'll pay somebody to build it. I'll keep working my job, probably two jobs. You know, that's kind of what you have to do out here. And You're then, yeah. firefighting and doing what else? Uh, I work security sometimes. Uh, we had two businesses and those burned down. So that's kind of a different. You and your wife had two businesses? Yeah. So oh, we had man. a surf school and a coffee shop oh, in town. Oh man, I'm sorry. And complete burn down, we're, we're underinsured. They pay us for 12 months an alternative living expense. So, you know, they pay our rent for 12 months. Okay. So what happens Who, when- The insurance company does or FEMA the, the does? The insurance company okay. does. If you have homeowner's insurance, FEMA denies you benefits. They gave us our $700 check and then said, you guys are denied insurance or um, benefits if you have homeowner's insurance leases but what, and what's all that with stuff. the? I, I did hear of that. I think most people in the country heard of that $700 and it seemed laughable. Like, yeah. What, what I mean, is that it, for? I, just to help, you know, like to help pay, <laughs> buy groceries. I don't know. I don't know. Who thought that one out? I don't, I mean, right. Right. Like any, any amount of money helps. Yeah. But that in, in that situation at that time, it seemed really, uh, in poor taste <laughs> to give out like, yeah, it's like, $700 these days. Doesn't yeah. Go very far. Especially yeah, I mean, here. there's, there's literally people, you know, still searching for their family Yeah. and they're talking about a $700 check. You're holding very calm through all this. Fair to say. Uh, I, yes and no. I mean, yeah, you have your ups and downs, but okay. I, I haven't had a breakdown. It doesn't seem like it's going to help to to freak out and break down and and you know. Sure. But I mean, there's times where I'm super angry. We have no control over this process. The government has blocked off our land. You know, whether it's to search through the ashes, to do the EPA to come through. All these things we need to happen, right? And all these things we can't do on our own. But to, to, to be blocked from your own land that you, and then still have to pay your mortgage on it. I mean, not, it's insulting, but it's also not sustainable. Like who, once this goes over a year or two, right? who can afford to pay their mortgage and rent? I mean, like I guess our so mortgage you're, is- So you're saying now because your, mortgage, your rent's being covered, your mortgage is being deferred, there'll be, a, there'll be a time where it's not deferred? So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, if you have a loan that's owned by them, you get 18 months of deferrals, what they've told us, you know, and, and so much of this is just what you hear. It's not like there's just a big portal that gives you all this solid 100% information. But at, at some point, if we, even if we could defer it for five years, you're eating up all your equity. Yeah, you know? yeah you're like not it, living in it. We're gonna have to take out SBA loan probably to finish construction on it. Mm -hmm. So that's eating up more equity and it's a bigger monthly payment. We're gonna have to build a $1.5 million house, $1.7 million house, mm -hmm. just to like have equity in it for the bank to be satisfied. You know, so it's, there's a lot of players involved in that property, you know, the banks, insurance company, FEMA, county, 
as an owner of it, with all the liability of it, we have the least say of anything right now. So you can't speak for everyone. Off Man. So like I said, it's a little more complicated than it seems. So when you hear that they're starting to build in Maui, it sounds great, but what the people are going through who have to build, what they're actually receiving in terms of money, what they've actually paid, you know, the furl of a mortgage, how long that's going to last. Again, like I said in the before the previous clip, it sounds like people are being filtered towards a certain option. And I don't know if that's being intentionally done, but it seems a little seems like it is. I won't mince my words here. Seems like it is a little intentionally done and they're all being pushed towards a certain option and it's not it's not fair and uh yeah, we'll see where this all goes. Like I said, you know, I'll probably do something different on my other channel because I'm just free to do whatever. But anytime Joe brings up Maui at all, I like to just do a little update for everybody just because it's not something that we're thinking about. You know, Biden was just in a debate where he seemed the worst that he's ever seemed. Uh, <laughs> there's so many different things going on in the world right now. The election's coming in about what, like five and a half months or so, something like that. So there's a lot of stuff going on in people's minds but figured i'd just bring you a quick update on maui those people are still suffering they're still going through it and uh we're still sending ukraine money so anyways like subscribe turn on the notifications helps the channel tremendously and other than that i'm out